uh, Haiti that were hit more directly. Uh, Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the world. It has consistently been hit and battered by a lot of natural disasters to compound uh, what is already uh, great poverty there. Uh, we know that hundreds of people uh, have lost their lives and that there's been severe property damage and they're going to need help rebuilding. So I would ask uh, all Americans to uh, go to the American Red Cross and uh, other uh, philanthropic agencies uh, to make sure that we're uh, doing what we need to do to help uh, people in need. Uh, and we'll continue to provide information. If you're interested in how you can help uh, the people of Haiti and others, uh, you can go to whitehouse.gov and we'll provide you some direction in terms of where uh, even the smallest contribution can really make a big difference. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. All right, an area experiencing very heavy rain and wind right now. We know it's St. Augustine. We're going to get right out there to uh, St. Augustine with Shelby Danielson. A very different story in St. Augustine right now. I don't even have to really explain it to you. You just have to uh, look out here and see it for yourself. You can see this area is really just a lake right now. This is the main road through St. Augustine. There are street signs that are floating in this river. There is a debris, there's trash, and there's even some street signs here. There's one right here, I believe. Street signs, that's for the trolley. There's a, a street sign that was down there earlier that marked this road. You can see just how deep it is. After this, we are going to move to higher ground and get shelter. And if you look out further, I want you to see the bay is overflowing here. Look at the palm trees. The wind is so powerful. The marina right behind us, the boats are rocking back and forth. Uh, of course, we have not even seen the worst of it yet. And I've still even seen some cars come through here. We're getting out of here right now because this is not safe. It hasn't been safe for a while, but we need to seek higher ground. Wherever you are, uh, make sure you stay inside. Do not go outside. Back to you guys. Thanks very much. Wow, that has really gone downhill yeah, over the last quickly. couple of hours, My even goodness. the last hour. So, Shelby, don't worry, she is going to stay safe out there. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been talking about the bridge closures, and I think one thing we should always say when we talk about the Sydney Lanier Bridge mm -hmm. uh, and all the bridges in St. John's County being closed, but that was in Brunswick, Sydney Lanier. Um, eight bridges in St. John's County closed, two now in Jacksonville, the Dames Point Bridge and the bridge over the Intercoastal going on Atlantic Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Really, how do I say this? You shouldn't be out Stay driving off anyway. The road, so plain the and fact simple. that the bridges are closed really yeah. doesn't matter that much because nobody right now should be driving. And uh, let me just ask Lauren this: um, for the next how many hours should we plan to not be on the roads? Or I Tim? Think, you know what? As, even as we head into this evening, you're going to want to the track will be taken up farther toward north until eight o'clock tonight. Okay. And that's of course, you know speeding it up slightly, but we're still going to see the rain. We're still going to see the winds um, even as the storm moves up towards the north. So not until tomorrow, you're saying? I mean, really, if you can, just stay hunkered down. You know, a lot of us want to go out and see what, it, what it's like around the neighborhood, but it's not just the best thing. It's not the best thing to do. You want to yeah. hang inside. This is a, a long-winded event here. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, a quick tornado warning where we can walk outside after 20, 30 minutes, but um, this is a, you know, 12-hour event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, Tim, if you're over there right now, let me ask you, people are still worried about being in their houses. We're not talking, we hope, an event here that would destroy or take down somebody's house. I'm sure people are worried about that. Uh, we, are, we are not talking about the, that type of scenario. We're talking about, um, unless you're in a mobile home, hopefully, hopefully you're not in a mobile home, then uh, I don't think mobile homes will be picked up by these winds, but a little more concerned about that, but are, but because, although, again, uh, th this is an interesting combination because I want to be careful. Although we've had good news compared to being hit by a catastrophic event, this is still the most significant hurricane, even though the eye is going by us offshore, that many of us have experienced here in years. Sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. So what's that mean to uh, go straight to Jeannie's question? Uh, we're not talking about homes being destroyed. My greatest concern, as we talked about all yesterday and last night, are trees and debris. And most significantly, trees coming down on your home. Um, so at the very least, um, Hopefully you thought about that before the storm occurred. It's too late to do anything about that. If you know where your big old trees are, try not to be on that side of the house. Um, just to state the obvious, 
Um, windows are going to be your most vulnerable area. That's where debris can come flying through. And I know this becomes very interesting to look at. I know Timmy did it five years old constantly when you look out the window, uh, but you don't want to be on the sides of the house where the trees are and or the winds are strongest. And we can even talk about wind direction as long until the hurricane goes by us. And that's going to happen first in Flagler County, probably by about uh, one or two in the afternoon. Then St. John's County, it's going to go by you. And what I mean by by you, it's still going to be windy. Uh, but the winds are going to shift. We're going to talk about wind direction here uh, that it's going to go by you in Flagler County early in the afternoon, St. John's County, middle of the afternoon. We're still expecting overall when we look at the final numbers that the highest winds and the greatest storm surge, the highest storm surge of about eight feet, that's going to be in Flagler County. But for those of you in Flagler County and Putnam County, right now you're experiencing winds out of the north. So if you're in your house and you are super concerned about something coming down on your house, think about that. So get on the southern side of your house. Once the hurricane goes by, then the winds will shift out of the south and southwest. And so therefore, if you're worried about something coming down on your house, it's going to come down on the south and southwest side of your house. Let's work it north in St. John's County. We saw what it's like in St. Augustine now, and we think that surge is going to come up a little bit more. It's probably that surge now is probably at about four to five feet. It may come up a couple more feet there uh, in St. John's County. It was St. Augustine, I think, is a pretty good representation of St. John's County with it being right on the coast and um, somewhat southern, but somewhat center there, and at least winds gusting to about 85 miles per hour. But if you're in St. John's County and you're concerned about your house and something coming in against it, again, until the hurricane gets by you. So let's say between now and two o'clock, it's the northern side of your house where things would come down. Once the hurricane gets by you, if something's going to come down, and my concern continues to be big trees and or sometimes those limbs are as big as a big tree, uh, it would come down from the south and the southwest. So there's Flagler, Putnam, and St. John's County. Jeannie and uh, Keith will cover other counties as the hurricane works to the north. Thanks very much. We understand that uh, Sheriff Mike Williams uh, with Duval County is about to talk a little bit more about the bridges. As we've been saying, and, and that's the number one question we're getting right now, are right. the bridges closed? Uh, the bridge over the Intercoastal Waterway on Atlantic Boulevard, that's closed. Mm -hmm. The Dames Point Bridge is closed. That's in Duval County. And you've and got can, the St. John's County. You can run through the St. John's County bridges right now. It's down to six closed. Volano Bridge, Bridge of Lions, 312 Bridge, SR 206, and uh, the Shands Bridge as well. All of those bridges are closed out in St. John's County. This is something that the sheriff put out early on Shire Shore. He said, look, this is something that we're going to have to do. It's just not safe at this point. So, yeah. and the, the big thing we've been hammering home all morning long is stay off the roads. You know, it, of course the bridges are going to be closed because it's not safe on the roadway. So stay inside if possible. Yeah, and then in Glen County up by uh, the Golden Isles there, the Jekyll Island Causeway um, was closed. Uh, we've been waiting to hear about the St. Simons Causeway. Mm -hmm. And of course the big bridge, the Sydney Lanier Bridge is closed. That was one of the first ones to be closed. Um, Gosh, about an hour or hour or two ago. The, you know, the day is kind of, kind of blending together. Lucky for us. It's a okay. blurring in. But let's go now to uh, Sheriff Mike Williams the to hear more around, about the bridges. Some of the, some of the bridges in the ICW area are beginning to close. Listen, I, I would say this. It's no surprise that the bridges are closing. And I would anticipate within the next hour, two hours, that most all of the bridges in Duval County will be closed. I know there's been confusion. We've, we've heard one bridge is closed, one isn't. Who is determining this and where can people, where can they find out exactly what's closed and when? So, and, and we've, we've been talking about this for the last couple of days, but as we put this information out, you know, look for reliable sources to get your intel about the bridges. Uh, at JSOPIO will be one on Twitter to do that. Uh, we will be obviously reaching out through, uh, through you guys with press releases, making sure um, that we get the information out to you. Uh, and, and the COJ, the real city website or the, the uh, Twitter account, also can put that out. What is this? What is the uh, at, at City of Jacksonville? So we'll put that information out. Make sure it's a reliable source. It's, it's the original source. Uh, and as they come offline, we'll, we'll do that. But again, I think it's important to remember plan on them all being offline within the next couple hours. And I, for right now, and just so we know, we know that uh, the Dames Point Bridge is closed. Well, I don't know at this point. So the last briefing I got, we had two closed. But again, uh, they are all going to be closed within the next hour to hour and a half, two hours, something like that. All of the bridges, you yes, would think, I would in the next two that. and a half hours. Sure. Sheriff Williams, thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck today, and we'll be checking back. Thanks. And, and, and Sheriff, um, what, what are you hearing as far as how, fa how high the winds are now, and is that why you guys expect to close the bridge within the next couple of hours? Yeah, so, the, so the, the bridges are, we have equipment on the bridges that monitor the wind speed. 
Uh, and when we get to 40 mile an hour sustained winds, we will close the bridges. We don't anticipate that fluctuating. So when we close them, we, we, are, we are saying that they're going to be closed until, you know, the early morning hours of uh, Saturday morning. So, I, again, I would have people plan and prepare for those bridges, again, to be closed within the next 90 minutes, two hours. Uh, but we monitor the wind speed, and when it hits that 40, you know, sustained winds, we, we close that. Uh, conditions at the beach, uh, already seeing, you know, uh, above 50 mile an hour sustained winds at the beach. Uh, and I think you're going to get a meteorology uh, update here soon. But again, we again nothing we didn't anticipate, things that we expected, and I think that again it's just a uh, things for for people to uh, take into account. Obviously, everybody should be hunkered down at this point. We should be in our homes. We should be in our safe places, uh, ready to ride it out. And I, one more question for you: Are you getting any medical calls? Are there any? Is there any information you're receiving about people calling for help or anything that they need right now? So I have not heard of any yet. I'm sure that, that we have some, and we are still. Obviously, monitoring that, uh, we're going to constantly monitor weather in terms of our response, uh, and, and we, we will stay on that throughout the storm. And last night, please spell your name or your first name. Hi, on a authentic website or Twitter account like JSOPIO on Twitter or at COJ on Twitter uh, to make sure that you heard some accurate information. We've seen some rumors and some miscommunications already earlier today about mm -hmm. this, but his big message here, I think, is that in one or two hours, almost all the bridges in Duval County will be closed, not just for a short time, but through tomorrow morning, and they're not saying when they would reopen them. So basically what that means is you, you, you just can't go anywhere right now. They don't want you to go anywhere. It's too dangerous. If there's a medical emergency, call mm -hmm. 911. But I, can you think of any other reason somebody would need to go out right now? Absolutely not. Stay off the roads. That's the main message they've been hammering home all morning long. It's the best thing to do. And for a look at why, we're going to head out now to Fleming Island where we'll see Carice Jackman. She'll give you a quick look at things. As you can see, the wind is whipping out there and they're dealing with flooding, uh, something we're seeing in St. Augustine as well. And right here in Jacksonville. Carice. That's right. The wind is whipping and is whipping really hard and it's coming in from the side for us. So from my left to my right, it's just hitting me to the side and on down. And I want you to take a look behind me to show you how bad the wind is actually blowing. If you can see the trees there and you can still see some of the boats that are docked right now. And then if you look all the way over there towards the American flag, it is really intense when we're dealing with all of this wind. And again, we cannot stress enough. We've been out here for the past two hours and people are still walking up and down this dock. I don't know how many times we have to repeat it. Please do not walk up and down this area where you have the water. It is very dangerous. Take heed, take our warning seriously and stay inside. This is a time where you have to stay inside and keep stay on your guard, keep your guard up and just pay attention to the weather reports. Let us do our job out here. You stay inside and take cover. For now, we are live in Fleming. Fleming, <clears throat> Fleming Land and Carice Jackman, First Coast News. Back to you. There you go. It's difficult to talk in the wind. I've been in those situations. It almost knocks your breath out there. Really? So when the rain pelts against you, it feels like little bullets. I'm Fleming coming Island. I'm sorry. Fleming that, Island. Thank you very much. Right. We understand. We completely. appreciate your help. Don't you worry at all. We got the message for sure. Uh, we were uh, hearing from Governor Scott uh, not too long ago, and he was saying that you know he had already applied for a pre-landfall emergency declaration from the federal government. Now he is looking to uh, come up with a, a, a wide, more widespread uh, request, mm -hmm. and that will give us these sort of uh, help uh, from FEMA, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of help. Food, water tarps, generators, water pumps, search and rescue teams, hazmat assessment teams, cots and blankets, food distribution vehicles, and helicopters. So that would be federal resources to support the recovery efforts in Florida from FEMA. Um, and I can't imagine they wouldn't grant that, but those are the sort of things that he has coming in. And mm -hmm. a, a note, uh, a local note here, Governor Scott is directing um, that the housing be available for utility crews coming to our state to help and Camp Blanding in Northeast mm -hmm. Florida is already ready to house more than a thousand utility workers and also their trucks. So that will be able to have kind of an army of utility workers to get out there and you know you want to see them in your neighborhood. Right. If you have power lines down, it's like, welcome, mm -hmm. please come in and get my power back on. That plus, you know, already 3,500 National Guard members have been activated. So they're out there. They're here to help if they can. But we want to get over now to Lauren Routenkrantz. I believe she has a quick update for us on damages. Lauren? Yes, I 
Yes, you know what? We are continuing to watch the National uh, Weather Service. We've got the uh, live chat going here, and it has a bunch of information coming in from the emergency managers across the area, also our weather spotters. And um, we are seeing a lot of winds picking up, of course, near Flagler Beach. Um, we had a wind gust of 76 miles per hour Good. at a Good. Flagler Beach weather station. Good. Also, sure. um, St. Augustine Airport reported a gust of 60 miles per hour out of the north. Ortega and Duval County had a large tree down across the street and utility lines down with power outages in that area. St. Augustine and St. Johns County were seeing flooding along that seawall at Castillo uh, de San Marcos. And of course, that's where our um, Shelby Danielson is um, in Arlington, actually. Just down the road here from the station, we're seeing trees down on a home across the street in East Arlington. So, uh, you know, the concern was going to be the wind in this situation and toppling over some of those weak trees or just, uh, you know, weak rooted trees that have had the ground saturated for days now. And so that's a big concern as we head into the next several hours. Um, we've got a couple of tropical storm force winds. Of course, Flagler Beach, they're seeing about 60 to 75 miles per hour right now. Um, and Let's see, Palm Coast, uh, we're seeing reports of trees uprooted as well. Now, we also have those aerial flood warnings in effect, um, Keitha and Jeannie, because we're seeing a lot of rainfall very quickly. About three inches plus have fallen in some of these areas, and we could see another three inches plus fall in the next several hours. So continue to stay updated here. If I get any new reports, guys, I will definitely let you know. All right, thanks very much. I wanted to add some terminology. I tried earlier to explain a little bit about what uh, Governor Scott had requested from the federal government. What he has requested is that we are declared a major disaster area for all of Florida as a result of Hurricane Matthew. And as I was saying, that would enable us to get supplies from FEMA, the ones I listed from tarps to generators to helicopters. So we were searching for that word major disaster. They have so much terminology, but the bottom line is to get the federal government to come in hell and help out um, all up and down the east coast of Florida. Okay, we want to head out now to Atlantic Boulevard where we find Muriel Mills. She has a look at uh, the situation in that area. Muriel? We are on the corner of Linden and Atlantic Boulevard heading east and we're surveying for damage and so far this is what we found. The Morning Glory Church steeple has completely toppled over from strong winds. You can see that straight ahead. This is the Morning Glory Church on Linden right and Atlantic Boulevard. We've seen a lot of standing water on these streets. We've seen a lot of awnings that are ripped and shredded from the strong winds, but so far this is the largest amount of damage that we've seen so far. We've only been on this drive though for about 15 minutes. So we're to keep driving around looking for it. It has been really strong winds. Our car has been sort of swaying back and forth, especially when it's in park. And as you can see, people are still driving in this. So if you are out on the roads, get to shelter now. This is the best time to do it. Do not be driving. All right, we'll send it back to you. Wow. Wow. It is actually not that dark here. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why it looks that dark. All right, so uh, here, is, first of all, that was interesting. Uh, here is the latest. Uh, that is 29.4, 80.5. So the hurricane is a beam of Flagler County and moving toward the north. Now, looking at the satellite analysis, and I'll talk about the satellite analysis as a remind you of the forecast track. And really, the hurricane is already right about here. Uh, won't move much closer as to the coast, but will be moving closer as you are farther off to the north. And we're going to get to radar in a moment. But I do think sometimes under these situations where we've been watching it so long that uh, hope helps. And the hope in that this is not going to last long is there. And the uh, hope that this storm is not going to be any stronger is there. And let me just talk about that. I've just now been looking at the most recent satellite picture. We have infrared satellite pictures. And infrared satellite pictures simply mean they look for the clouder, the colder cloud tops and the colder the cloud tops are getting then the stronger the hurricane is coming. If the cloud tops are warming that means although it may take a while to get down to the surface where we are that means the hurricane is weakening. Well over the last couple of hours we've seen tremendous warming in the clouds. That doesn't mean that we don't have a major hurricane to deal with. We deal, uh, do. I'm simply saying for those of you in which hope helps get us through this tough stuff 
Uh, not only do we not see this hurricane intensifying, we see yet further evidence of why this hurricane will eventually Let's not use the term uh, weaken. I liked what Rick Knapp said. We're going to begin to see it wind down. We are now seeing, and I think having this sort of split screen helps because you can be a forecaster with me. Uh, let's see, this is a radar loop that only goes back an hour. And notice uh, there's a lot of motion here, okay? But just notice this, this semicircle. That's the northern eye wall. So from this point on, if uh, you don't want to wait for me or Lauren or anybody else to tell you uh, what the hurricane's doing, watch the northern eye wall and you can see it sort of emerging, almost like a rising moon here. And here it is working north and maybe just a little north northwest. So we're still going to say it's parallel and our coastline it goes toward the north northwest. So still kind of paralleling the coastline. And as it does that, the inner energy just continues to pinwheel around the storm right over the warmest waters, bringing in torrential rains and the winds and the storm surge as well. Again, I'm not doing a de-emphasize the storm surge, but for those of you that would like to have a little bit of hope in St. Augustine, I think we're within about an hour of when the storm surge will reach its peak. And here's why. As the hurricane heads to the north, Right now, the winds are out of the east to the east of us, but more significantly, right on shore, they're out of the northeast. So whatever storm surge is there, it's really pushing it up against the ocean. However, once the hurricane almost, really before, almost makes it a beam, the winds become northerly. And once they become northerly, then not as much of the ocean is pushing on shore. And just within the last hour, we've seen St. Augustine's winds go from out of the northeast to now out of the north. And I think within about two hours, St. Augustine's winds will actually become north and northwesterly. I'll let you know when that happens. Once that happens, we should see their storm surge at least not get any worse, okay? But if you're from St. Augustine north until the hurricane gets up to a similar situation, uh, then the storm surge will continue to increase until those winds come around to the northwest. For those of you out toward Highway 301, I think this is interesting, um, and, and, and maybe you can let me know if you do. I mean, if you're just looking at this as a forecaster and you're farther to west, you're thinking, oh my gosh, look at all of this heading our way. But if you watch it a little while, notice how it heads west and it both falls apart and then gets pulled down south again. So as long as this hurricane continues to move north and northwest, this is why basically if you're to the west off Highway 301, some rain and some wind, uh, but all of that activity just east of you uh, will pretty much stay east of you. Uh, on the other hand, that does mean the coastal counties, and I think it's pretty interesting. It's a great forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, notice the counties under the hurricane warning. Look who's continuously under uh, those rains and within those squalls. Uh, we're getting gusts now consistently uh, in Duval and St. John's in the 50s and in southern St. John's and Volusia County, Volusia uh, County uh, gust that is in the 60s. And uh, we're now going to throw it back to Keitha and Jeannie, who just keep on going. Well, <laughs> well so, Tim, right, you're the one with all the incredible Seriously. information. You and your whole meteorology team, it's, it's, it's really helpful. Yeah, we need to get out to um, St. Augustine again. That's where Shelby Danielson is standing by live. She has a look at things there. That situation continues to intensify as the hours go on. Uh, Shelby, how's it looking out there right now? Not good. Well, we've moved to higher ground. Uh, we got away from those extreme floodwaters all over downtown St. Augustine. We're headed to 95 and State Road 16 right now. And tucked behind the trees here, well, you can see one utility truck right here. And there are a couple other behind these broken branches. They are actually parked over here uh, off the road because they are not allowed to be out fixing power right now. In St. John's County, currently 29,000 people are without power, including everyone they tell me along this road uh, we're along state road 16 right now uh, but as I said there are multiple more uh, utility crews right behind here and they have been ordered to stand down because of the power of this storm another update I just spoke uh, with someone inside of a storm shelter and she tells me they are not being allowed to leave and uh, although she's a little disappointed by that she says that's for a good reason you do not need to be outside in this right now. It is a, is a good reason that they're keeping you locked in those storm shelters. It is for your own safety. We're going to keep uh, looking around this area, uh, warning you of anything. I will say there is a lot of debris in the roadway, even where it's not flooded. Trees are down just about everywhere. But regardless, no one should be on the road right now anyway. In St. Augustine, Shelby Danielson, First Coast News. Boy, there's right. no reason to be 
be out right now. And but we're so glad that she's decided to move to higher ground yeah. as well. We've been getting in emails as well, folks concerned about Shelby, not just her, but our whole team and where they are. But we want to let you know they're safe. If they were in a situation that was not safe, we would not let them be there. You, we keep on warning you to stay off of the roadways because we're your eyes and your ears. We'll be able to bring you to several different locations, different areas, your neighborhood throughout the first coast. All right, so when you say San Marco, you think of all these beautiful places, mm -hmm. nice shops uh, along the river. There's actually a park there where people fish and, and they relax and probably not going on right now. And it's an area so prone to flooding. Hani Rodriguez is there now and we saw during her mean, which was nothing compared to this, the water just spilling over that yeah. edge. Uh, Hani? Hey, uh, Jeannie, that's right. It's definitely not a beautiful uh, morning here or, or afternoon here in San Marco. As you can see, some barricades were put up. JSO has been patrolling uh, the area as well. Now, the barricades, though, haven't stopped people from still trying to walk up here, take some pictures. The river's pretty choppy. Um, and, and like I mentioned, just we've seen people come up here talking to us, asking us if we're doing all right. They want to see what the river looks like. They kind of want to have the before and after pictures. It's going to get worse going into the afternoon. We spoke to some ladies who were kind of braving the weather out here uh, just to kind of look around. And they actually told me that they were having a hurricane party. They had some friends from Jack's Beach who evacuated towards San Marco and stay with them at their house. Take a listen. We actually don't have that sound for you right this minute, but we will have it uh, coming up next when we uh, check in back with you guys. As I mentioned, the barricades are up, but we've seen plenty of people driving by, walking up here. Flooding is not really a major issue right now, uh, but I'm sure as we get closer towards the afternoon, towards that storm, we will see some of that. And there's actually somebody walking right by here right now, barefoot, uh, I guess, trying to take a look at, at the river, like I mentioned. <laughs> Stay safe out there. All right, we'll check in with you guys later on. All right, thank you very much, honey. Let's just hope all those beautiful trees, not just in San Marco, but yeah. all over our first. I love the trees we have around here, and I think all of us worry. Yeah. You know, we worry when we go home. We, might be a tree we've on the been house, telling we hope you not, guys. So. It's All obviously, right, so. yeah, we just heard a little bit. It's obviously very hectic here behind the scenes and people are screaming out different things. We just heard that Orange Park, there might be power lines down there. And I believe Lauren Rottencrantz is a little bit more on that this morning. Lauren? Yeah, so I don't have, you know, a tremendous amount of information, but what I can tell you is uh, we do have a local storm report from the National Weather Service that says in Orange Park, which is in Clay County, there are large or at least a large tree down, um, possibly on a home and vehicles and also power lines down as well. So that is uh, going to be a dangerous situation. Hopefully no one was in that home or hopefully they are uh, safe, but we are going to be hoping to look for some pictures of this. And if we get any, we will uh, let you know. I'm going to tweet this out for now and then try to see if I can find any more information on social media, guys. Just in case, let's just hope not. Just in case you have damage uh, to your home, there are a couple of tips. Let me just pass along to kind of stick in your head. Uh, these are from insurance experts, and maybe it's something you haven't heard of. Uh, they say don't throw away anything that's damaged. If a couch is 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 damaged or anything else, keep it there. Take pictures of everything, and then make sure that if you have tree debris, cut it all up, but place it on the ground and leave it there. In other words, the insurance people want to come and see everything. So yeah. don't think I just want to get rid of it all. And if you have any repairs that you've started to do, this would be, of course, after today and tomorrow, make sure you save all the receipts. So just some ideas to kind of tuck away and hopefully we sure hope you don't need those. Yeah, this yeah. is definitely a, a dangerous storm. No question about that. Deadly indeed. We even uh, heard from uh, a woman in what is St. St. Lucie. She's only 58 years old. She mm -hmm. had a heart attack and we're told that emergency crews could not get to her. So she uh, she died. She lost her life. A 50 year, 58 year old woman in St. Lucie. She lost her life. We're told she had a heart attack and emergency crews could not get to her in time. Also, we know about a JEA lineman. He was injured while trying to uh, work in Mandarin. He was rushed to the hospital as well. We don't have an update on his condition as, as yet, but again, a very dangerous storm. And of course, we're still here at the TV station downtown where we usually are. This is our home down here. Um, a lot of us have been sleeping down here. Mm -hmm. You and I have been on the air for 12 hours now. Yeah, just so, about. And I, I just say that to, to make sure that you know that we're, we're not going to, mm -hmm. to disappear. We're going to be here for you through the duration of the storm. Mm -hmm. And I wish you could see, I and mean, we have so many crews, it's unbelievable. Engineers yeah. upstairs, we have photographers and crews, we have people coming in from out of town. Mm -hmm. And all that to say, we want to make sure that the information gets to you just as soon as you can. And so just 
stay home, please. Stay home and watch it from your house and don't mm -hmm. go out adventure. And I think the trickiest part is when it starts to seem like it clears up. It's People want to go out and look around, but that's not going, uh, hopefully not going to happen. Yeah. But when we say that we're here, there was an option for us to move if the water was mm -hmm. going to rise too high. We're not sure yet, but it mm -hmm. looks as if we may not have to move. And I want to go over to Tim Deegan right now. Um, Tim, you have been very involved in, the, in that decision. I'm not sure it's been made it officially yet, um, but it's looking better that we don't have to move. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. And, and for those of you who uh, wonder what we mean is, uh, we are, for those of you who don't know, we are right downtown, right by the bank, right across from uh, the 